I am at the show 2024 with Ed Sidario of the Audio Association, Kevin Malgram, Chief Designer of Evolution Acoustics, and Gary Leeds of Hear This. Good morning, Rod. Kevin, tell us about the System 3 speaker behind you. System 3 speaker has a passive MTM uh, array. The crossover point between the tweeter and the mid ranges is 1.5 kilohertz, and that's fed to an active woofer system which at the current moment is at 200 hertz, but that's fully adjustable. Actually, you can fine tune and adjust the speaker to your room to get the proper bass response. Um, these drivers here, these are the cell woofers from Accuton. These are also cell mid-ranges from Accuton. The tweeter is proprietary and made for us. And uh, it's what's unique about this AMT is it's actually a silk textile AMT, which is unusual. Most AMTs are made of plastic. And uh, it's highly efficient, it's 98 dB <coughs> sensitivity, and it has a frequency response that goes all the way down to 5 hertz if you want, and all the way up to 40 kilohertz. What kind of amplification is in the woofer sections? Uh, it's an ice power module, but it's their newest generation, and it's uh, significantly more musical than the previous versions that we used in our prior speaker. This basically replaces our older MM3 exact speaker, but it's all contained in one package. So the exact crossover network is housed in the MTM here, and 85% uh, of this cabinet is all crossover, 70 pounds of parts. And for the passive Accuton uh, mid-range and tweeter, how do you find tube electronics sound different than solid-state electronics on that section? How do, well, how do I, well, this is a very natural speaker. It's very revealing, so it's going to bring out the characteristics of those particular amplifiers. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not going to add any additional coloration to it. Um, you know, the exact crossover creates an extremely flat response, and so what you get, you know, what you put in is what you're going to get out of it. And what is the cost of this System 3 configuration? This is 129800 and if somebody wanted to add the additional tower of woofers, what is the additional cost of that? Well, that's a different configuration. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to go with a system 4 through a system 9, then this entire column becomes all passive. Mm -hmm. And then you have additional woofers, so uh, subwoofers. And you can have anywhere from 1 to, to 2 to 3 to even 6 subwoofers. Um, and it all goes up in price, you know, uh, per module. Terrific, Kevin. Thank you. Ed, this Wave Kinetics is a special turntable, I understand. It is. So this particular one, uh, for those that may or may not know, uh, Wave Kinetics was founded by our good dear friend, Jonathan Tin, who recently passed away right before the show last year. And so this one is the, a one and only, no other one in existence, Black NBS Jonathan Tin Memorial Edition. Just came fresh from the factory. Uh, mounted on there, we have a Tosca limited edition tone arm to the right, which has a DS Audio Master 3 optical cartridge. On the left is a Tosca tone arm with an Infinity um, Miyajima Infinity mono cartridge, uh, sitting on top of a Seismian uh, isolation platform. And below that, I have um, from Grim Audio an MU2 DAC streamer. Terrific, Ed. Thank you, Gary. Tell us about the. Bridged Westminster REI amplifiers, please. Sure, happy to. Um, before I get started, I want to thank my partner Ed here and Kevin Malgren, my long-term friend and colleague, for allowing me to show the Westminster Electronics with their brilliant speakers. So uh, let me start with the amplifiers. This is the first time, even though we've hinted at it before, it's the first time we actually pulled it off, running the bridged format of the Class A REI monoblocks. Typically, a pair of REIs into 8 ohms is 100 watts. Sort of sensationally, when we bridge them, we quadruple the power output. So it's 400 watts into 8 ohms and uh, 800 watts into 4 ohms. And how does Angus achieve that alchemy? Well, to tell you, it's part of the secret sauce. So I've asked Angus a few times, and he's pretty stingy with that information. <laughs> um, but originally, what I can say is that the amplifiers were designed to be bridged. And for commercial reasons, Angus thought, when we introduce the amplifier, let's just give two small mono blocks, and then we'll roll it out from there. So here we are 18 months later, actually starting to show off our best of the best. Now with such sensitive speakers, yes. what sonic improvements are you realizing by using bridged REIs rather than uh, just a, a standard single well, pair? Well, here's uh, sort of the um, quirkiness of it, if you will. 
is that actually the sonic improvements have nothing to do with the power. And in fact, with Kevin's system and the high efficiency and flat response that he's achieving, doesn't really require the extra power because the circuit when the amplifiers were originally designed in that configuration, we further lower the noise floor. We create more depth, more stage, more blackness between the instruments, and the already fantastic leading edge of the amplifiers is even better than in a traditional Okay, well, how repair. does doubling up the amplifiers lower the noise floor? Well, it halves the impedance of the amplifier. Okay. Mm -hmm. impedance. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And then, because of the unique nature of the power supply, which again, is the real magic in the REI amplifiers, it again allows the amplifier to move even faster than it does in a traditional stereo mode. So there'll be more coming on this, but when Angus is here, we'll let him take the next question. But Tell us about the new phono stage. Sure, so this is our new monologue phono stage. Um, it's modular in that we have three different cards. We make a mono card, we make a DS audio card. Angus thinks it's one of the best DS cards in the world. And of course, we make a traditional moving coil, moving magnet card. If you want all three, you can have three small boxes. Uh, traditional uh, Westminster arch architecture, unbelievable power supply, all carbon fiber interior, carbon fiber top, aluminum chassis. And so that complements the fact that the Quest preamp can also take two phono cards by mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So for an upgrade path, just like a single pair of REIs, you can double up after you buy the original set and make the next move if you choose to do so. You can also, with the Quest, start with the any one of our three phono cards, and then later you can upgrade to the mono, monologue. Mm -hmm. It's a great preamp with the phono stage cards built into it. The monologue is better. What does a client achieve going from the uh, built-in cart to the monologue? Uh, again, a lowering of the noise floor. But in terms of sonics, what is the yeah. person hearing different? Even further noise floor reduction, which means the micro details that are already great are even more revealing. Um, again, a little bit lower noise floor and increased dynamics because this power supply, unlike the nine individual power supplies that are in the Quest that do various functions, this is fully built out just for the phono card. So three benefits, better micro detail, lower noise floor, increased dynamics. Okay, Gary, terrific. Thanks and enjoy the show. Thank you very much, Ron. Great to see you. Appreciate, always good to see you.